Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be talking about how to keep up with your security advisories and updates on Linux. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and operating system videos. Jumping right in, most mainstream Linux distributions have security notices or advisories that are posted so that you can keep up with the latest and greatest in updates and patches that's directly posted on their website. For example, here I have the March 2021 security advisories available here that are available on Arch Linux. It's important to at least make note of some of these websites or pages so that you can reference them on occasion. There might be a critical package that your system uses that might actually have a vulnerability that can affect your computer. It can, however, be a pain to constantly keep updating, but it's important to keep both packages and the kernel up to date. This will protect your computer from security risks, and this is normally done through upgrading or patching a specific vulnerability on the system once that patch or update is available. So here I'll be showing you how to keep up with the latest security advisories, what they mean to you, and whether or not they're actually important. They might be something that you should consider patching up right away, and the first thing I want to talk about is the nvd.nist.gov website. This allows you to see the last 20 scored vulnerabilities with IDs and their summaries. So we can look through here and we'll notice a lot of these CVEs, which are IDs, and we'll talk about later. But mainly here, this is the National Institute of Standards and Technology from the U.S. Department of Commerce, which is the governing body that keeps track of this database. And it gives you a bit of a synopsis here, includes a database of security checklist references, security related software flaws, misconfigurations, product names, and impact metrics. So thanks to these people, we have a concise way of following these vulnerabilities and keeping track of their severity level. So moving on to CVs and CNAs, since we are moving right along, often an ID is assigned to an individual security risk or a vulnerability. Therefore, a CVE is known as a Common Vulnerabilities or Exposures ID. Again, CVE ID for short. And these CVEs are assigned by CNAs, so a CVE numbering authority. Again, a lot of acronyms, but don't get lost in those. Just know that these are companies that are a part of an overall authority and are overseen by one governing authority, which keeps track of the entire database. CVEs contain a brief description or overview, we'll be checking a few of those out, of a problem or vulnerability, as well as they can have a score that tells you the severity of that issue and how important it is to update. Looking here on the cv.mitre website, I'll put a link in the description below to all these places so you can kind of wrap your head around everything here. But these are all the companies that are a part of the CNA. And probably the best part of this table is the security advisories because it gives you a direct link to the advisory page for all of these companies. Some of the ones that we might know right off the bat, AMD right here, we have Adobe. And if we look through, I'm sure we can find a couple Linux ones as well. If I just search Linux, I have the Debian GNU Linux, as well as Canonical, which runs Ubuntu. So for example, if I wanted to look at the security advisories for Ubuntu Linux, I can go and click on advisories, and that will take me to a specific page located on ubuntu.com slash security slash notices, which gives me a list of all the latest notices on Ubuntu Linux. Now you have a way to check whether it's really important to take some time and make those updates. A lot of people who need to make regular updates choose to make these updates using scripts that will make your process easier and can run on a specific time period. Let's say run an update every day which is nice so you don't have to do that yourself. But occasionally it is nice to make sure that those scripts are running in the background as intended. Now that we're on the security notices page for Ubuntu specifically, we'll explore some of the other more mainstream Linux distributions. But here we can see there are various different notices. So if we just click on one, this is a Linux kernel vulnerability. And it says several security issues were fixed in this Linux kernel. Notice we have some CVE numbers here, three different ones available right below. We can click on these to individually see a description 
of what's going on in this kernel vulnerability. Also, it's nice because it tells you which versions are affected. Now notice how fast you can start filtering through here. Let's say you have Ubuntu 20.04. Well, none of these fixes actually apply to that version, so neither do these. Uh, let's see, the very first one, we have this squid vulnerabilities. Again, uh, 20.04, it finally applies here. WebKit GTK has some vulnerabilities in it, so 20.04 applies here. Firefox as well, 20.04. But now, let's keep sifting through to figure out how severe these might be. So if we click on a CVE, you may or may not get a priority. So priorities can go between basically zero to a 10, at least on the CVSS scale, or you can get something from these websites that kind of just tell you whether it's a low, medium, or high priority. So this is uh, a medium priority fix here, at least for this CVEID number. So in this case, you can weigh whether or not Firefox is something you use often or if it's even installed on your system and whether or not it's time to update or upgrade that package. So the usefulness here is that there's this huge database of where all the security advisories are posted and kept track of, although you probably won't necessarily know of a vulnerability until it's patched and ready to be pushed to the end user as a fix. It's still nice to keep track at least on your specific Linux distribution. Again, these types of pages are available across many different distributions. So let's take a second to look and see how Arch Linux Security Advisories is laid out. And on this page, they made it a little simpler for us to see. We have an advisory number followed by a package name here and then a severity type. And it just kind of gives you the type of issues that were fixed. So if we click on a specific advisory, It'll tell us again the CVE IDs that we talked about. You can click on one and figure out what the severity level is, further what the type is, and what it actually applies to. So it looks like Python 2 is affected and can cause a denial of service attack to be made, but the severity is pretty low for the case. So again, this helps you weigh your options here on Arch Linux. And then RHEL has its own security advisories as well. So you're really looking specifically for your Linux distribution. Now, if your Linux distribution is a subset of another, it might be better to try looking for the base Linux distribution that represents yours. So for example, if you have Linux Mint and it's Ubuntu based, the Ubuntu security advisories will more than likely apply. So don't let that throw you off. Here in RHEL, again, we have an advisory tells you what products are affected, what date, and then a severity level. So a lot of these are important to keep up with. We'll just click on the first one. We're given an overview here, a nice synopsis, the actual topic, a description, and a solution as well. They get pretty far in depth here on RHEL. I actually like their security advisories the most out of any because it tells you fixes as well as the CVE numbers associated. So if we clicked on a CVE, ID or number. It tells you about how severe this one is. So somewhere a little more than an average severity level here with the CVSS version 3 base score being around 6. If you need to see the breakdown, RHEL is great at giving you information about security and the risks. One great page that I've found is this topic from Red Hat on CVEs as well as how the system actually works and keeps track of things. I'll make sure to post a link to the article below. It's great to reference if you're having a hard time following along. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button. It really does help me out. I'll continue on by next showing how I would approach making an update here in my Arch Linux distribution. The easiest way for me is usually to start up a terminal. And let's say I did find a package or perhaps my kernel needed to be updated. It is pretty simple to run that update for your specific system. In my case, I'm again using Arch Linux here. And in order to run an update, it's really just a one-liner. If, if I do sudo space pacman space dash s with the capital S y u and I press enter, that will scan through and sync my repos first and then update my system's packages. In turn, catching me up with the latest fixes 
for vulnerabilities as well as updating my packages. So I'll just run through that real quick. Here are a list of all the packages that will be updated, the total download and install size, and it's easy to run by just pressing yes and going on. It's quite a few packages here. I probably haven't ran this in about a day, but this is how I keep up to date. Now you don't have to be an IT professional or an administrator in order to understand these terms or sift through whether these fixes apply to you. Instead, you can look at the individually supplied sites that pertain to your specific distribution and make it a decent decision on whether it's time to update. But when in doubt, it's always a great thing to go ahead and just keep up with the latest and greatest. I will mention a couple other Linux distributions methods for updating or upgrading. For Debian-based distributions such as Ubuntu, you can do sudo apt update. After you run that one, you would do sudo apt upgrade. This will guarantee that the currently installed packages won't be removed or that packages that aren't already on your system won't be installed. And then finally, if you want sudo apt dist dash upgrade will retrieve and update your packages, including dependencies and, and install anything that it has to to make the update or upgrade take effect. This one's kind of, I don't care what's going on, just get me to the latest of everything. I get into specifics about this and how to actually make updates on Ubuntu in another video that I have. I'll post a link in the description below so you can check that one out as well if you're interested. It's a good one to follow if you aren't used to making updates on your system and you're using a Debian based distribution. You also don't actually have to update all your packages if you have a specific one you want to update. You can do that by doing sudo apt and really just install and then the package name here. That will actually just update the package if it's already installed for you and if it's not installed it will install it for you. And finally on RHEL based distributions you can use yum to check for an update first by doing it like this, check dash update. And then following that, you can specify a specific package if you do yum update some package or perhaps just yum update to update things as well. I believe that also applies with DNF. They're fairly similar to each other, but you might wanna check that one out before using it. One last mention I'll make is that the kernel updates sometimes require you to reboot your computer. This can be pretty detrimental to stable servers that have been running for a long time. And in that case, you need to research a little bit more to figure out how to actually apply these updates without having to reboot your computer in order to get the latest kernel update. Well, that's about it. Hopefully this video helped you learn more about security advisories, some acronyms, and how to keep track and update your system. And if it did, make sure to smash that like button for me. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.